in a country near you very soon. Uh, far away from that country here tonight, but hey, where it's all been born and bred, straight out of the No Gay Dojo. That's where Shomakato and Katsuya Morishima come from. These two men haven't exactly gotten along within their last year of professional activity. Two men who see each other as direct competition. There's no doubt about that, debuting just within one day of each other. And Morishima showing himself to be more advanced, and sadly, Kato paying the price on that. Yeah, well, I mean, you have those generational rivals, and in fact, we'll be talking about two of them, to, uh, what, in a couple of days from now in Sendai. Yep. Yoda Suji and Yuya Uemura will be wrestling for the 50th time. Yeah, 50th match. Did they get a cake or something? Uh, well, a little bit of Marlowe pudding. Well, maybe it's still a turnbuckle. How about that? Sent right into the steel, steel going down the spine. And Toro Yano, as you said, has been well into his promotional duties. The cover here, and it's only to not promoting himself in his Block B campaign because there is no Block B campaign for Toro Yano to run. That was stolen away from him by Bolton Oleg, and Olo made the best of it that he could, but currently sits at four points. Still an opportunity, though, to earn a couple more points on the board for Oleg, even if he cannot make it all the way into the playoff situation. Well, yeah, and those are, those are all you see opponents, so to speak, Takeshita coming up, Yuya Uemura as well. So the chance to really show himself right at the end. I think he already has shown himself, even those four points that he does have on the board, very impressive, always impressive in his performances. I think, Walker, I don't know if you agree with me, that Bolton's done enough to earn his way into G1 Climax 35. Well, I definitely think that while there's always room for improvement, that improvement seen night in and night out from Bolton Oleg, just like that, drives right through Katia Morishima. Even just the personal developments we've seen out of Bolton Oleg so far, debuting the boss, Marnica. And it's no shock to the system whatsoever. Ren Narita, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, keeping the attack in on the never open weight champion in AEW DDT zone, Kanosuke Takeshita. Hanari cannot see right now, Chris. Hey, hey, hey. Ren Narita, like a kid on Christmas. Blinded by his own gator there is Hanare. Right? <laughs> It is an RA currently sits at six points on the board. Ren Nari type, correct me if I'm wrong, eight points on the board. There we go. And those eyes even more susceptible to shots from Ren Nari type. Oh, expert striker meets an expert submission. And this is definitely a match I am interested in seeing next. Well, as much as Ren Narita likes to engage in those shenanigans with House of Torture, go to that push-up bar. Great stars make fight situations, striker and submission artist. Yeah, pulling out the stump here is Yoshinobu Kanemaru. Hanare talks in post-match comments about the pain that goes through your body, especially at this point in the tournament. We're nearing closer and closer to the end, and everyone's damaged on every single side of the roster. Does not matter whether you're just in the preview tags or if you're in the tournament overall, but Hanari is, is, considers himself to be one who has gone harder than every single other member in the tournament. That being the reason, hey, his body's damaged beyond repair. Look Cover here. Yeah, I mean, One nobody, count. there are no days off in this tournament. Not at yeah, all. I mean, we've said it, it sounds like a broken record, but it's true. This is one of the most difficult things that any athlete in any field, any sport can do. That's not yes. It'll be their first ever singles meeting coming up Saturday in Sendai, but they've wrestled many, many a time in 2024 alone, and mostly over, of course, the IWGP on the NJPW Strong Tag Team Championships. And I wonder whether it's a case, do you think we'll see Goto bring that pride, bring that fire out of El Fantasma, or is it all the more painful? Is this trying to adjust out of his tag team with Hikaleo that he had, you know, to be opposite one of the, the greatest rivals that G.O.D. had. Sure. I mean, I, th I think there's a prime discomfort yeah. there for El Fantasma, yeah. knowing that the last time he had to face off against Goto in a big match situation, you take it back to when the IWGP and strong openweight tag titles were on the line. Even Wrestle Kingdom 18 earlier this year, it was Fantasma who had to talk game plan with who? With Hikaleo. And now Hikaleo's not here to do that with, whether it's tag or singles.
But we're far beyond Hikaleo at this point, Chris Charlton. Mm. This audience tonight in Yokohama may be by El Fantasmo trying to move forward on his own volition, and that's what he has to do here. That's what he has to do coming up August 10th as well. Yeah, Fantasmo gonna take control with that side headlock, go to ground down and grind down Hiroki Goto as well. It's gonna be interesting to see where the crowd sides with Saturday night in Sendai. Of course, everybody loves El Fantasmo all across Japan. And they, they want to see him do well. They want to see him get past this and move on. But at the same time, there is such a fondness for Hiroki Goto. Hey, right up over the top of Hiroki Goto. Meets up with a drop kick. Goto goes down. And I think Jeff Cobb. Ready to get in, Gato won't tag. Yeah, here's the tag, it's Jeff Cobb, the world television champion. Gato's not gonna need to worry about tagging. Here comes the Imperial unit. And it's Cobb. We saw this power displayed against Bolton Oleg just yesterday. Oh, Cobb could catch him. Got him down. Right up and standing, moves on. Right on the chest of Finley in the cover here for Cobb, and it's two. Oh, Cobb wants the tour. And it's a tour David Finley has felt in the past. And it's a tour he's gonna feel tonight. Tour of the Islands, no. Oh, oh Irish curse. Oh, man. Jeff Cobb by no means a small man, and David Finley feeling the effects of that on his right knee. No doubt about it. Oh, might have been hoisted by his own petard on that one, right down across that knee. And tag made here. Here's Gano. Here's Francesco Akira. And Gano, such a classic style. That has developed over the years, just like that beard has. This is a classic style right there. Grab the whole kick. Another 50 and end. it's Gano, bam, drop kick. Takes down the junior heavyweight. And Akira to do it one more time for another night. Hello from Milan. And take it from the heavens, Francesco Akira, dive bomb away. Cross body, Whoa. takes down Gano. Whether that is the case in Cinder, because I think out of all of those, you know, I mean, the 50th, 50th singles matchup, you know, and there'll be probably what another 50 more before these guys hang it up, do you think? But you have to say, up to now, not a single one of them has been, apart from you could say that faction warfare gauntlet in Corcoran Hall, but a build promoted singles main event, there has not been until Saturday night. And with so much that playoff spot on the line, you could definitely make the argument this is the most important singles match they've ever had in their careers. And that argument will be made, it will be adhered to by Yuya Uemura and Yota Suji, just as they're battling it out, just in preview tag action. You're seeing them do the same back in Sendai. And keep in mind, it is a need-to-win situation for Yuya Uemura in Sendai. Yep, Suji does not have to beat Uemura. Uemura has to beat Suji. If, if, if Suji can get to 10, as, as we've been talking about with uh, the likes of Ren Naruto, David Finley earlier on, that definitely is going to help you because you don't want to be with your own back against the wall in that last league now. Yeah, so you're theorizing with your matrices, the bottom line will be 10 points in block B uh, I mean, at least, yeah, at least. least. You know, I think, you know, it could be a situation where you get 12, but, you know, I mean, certainly, if you take a fifth loss, then then you're out at this point, just yes. because there are so many people meeting at eight that you're, you're never gonna get beyond that spot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 
Suji's the type of guy, he has a lot of confidence. We've seen that confidence in many forms. We always talk about that studded smile on the face of Yota Suji. Do you see Yuya Uemura being the type? And hey, Cal Newman cutting up the jump early in on Tetsuya Naito here tonight. Exactly what he did in Osaka. Yep. And history very well could repeat itself, but you have to avoid it here. Naito out of the way, Newman. Wanted that moonsault right off the middle and is going to eat something much. Whoa! Hey, there you go. This is the fight Newman wanted. And drop kick. Wow, sends a suited up Naito right to the barricades. The only singles meeting between these two before did happen back a little over a month ago, two months ago. Osaka Joe Hall, Naito, a victory. Over Cal Newman, eight minutes, eight seconds. And we do have a 30 minute time limit here tonight. It's our first block A match of the evening. If you're joining us for the very first time, as the bell sounds, hold on a minute. Newman off the middle, one set out, cutter, oh. and dumped right over the top. Another man that knows the Oscars up very, very well. I do keep on saying it. I know Callum Newman can hit that very effectively. Even Shingo Takagi himself said right. that Callum's os cutter was more powerful, he felt, than Will Ospreay's. But feast or famine, and you never turn your back on Tetsuya Naito. Chris, I think there's something to be said. Remember back our first main event in Osaka, Tetsuya Naito took on Shingo Takagi. Shingo Takagi walked away with the victory. Shingo Takagi faces Callum Newman. Callum Newman walks away with the victory. Is there yeah. something to tie that together? Sure. I mean, if you're sitting there with your MMA math, then you would say, well, yeah, sure. That means Callum Newman can beat Tetsuya Naito. I know a lot of people want to claim that the jury is in on Callum Newman. I absolutely have to disagree with that point. Callum Newman has been improving beyond a shadow of a doubt. There's a reason that Tetsuya Naito had shirt off here tonight. None more unique than the KOPW champion. Going to make Sonata run yeah. on that wow. bad knee. Yeah. Nice, smart stuff, smart stuff. Abba yeah, uses his own right knee to it's, land down that Russian yeah, leg. You're right, you're right. But at the same time, Great Okan wanted to make Sonata run on that bad knee, and Sonata was able to put the brakes on. A little bit of pain, but that's given him some distance and some time. Anyone that knows the history of Sonata, you currently see that right knee with a little bit of a struggle, but there will forever be a target on that bicep. Bicep that was torn in last year's G1. We've made reference to it brief periods throughout Block A so far. Great Okan can change uh, the levels. He doesn't have That's to, it. though. That's it. He doesn't exactly. have to. Make him run. And Sonata. A drop kick. Oh. And has the height on that one as well. Okan yeah. right in front of us here at ringside. That was a big test of that knee. This might be an even bigger one. Leverage to the outside. Punch oh, shot. Oh. Trying to hold that stoicism together. With a tear in his eye and a pad knee, now trying to stretch it out over the guardrail. Is the juice worth the squeeze is the question. so many things that you can do yourself to try and heal whatever ails you outside of a visit to the trainer's room. There's no trainers at ringside right now that are at least going to be involved at this point in the match. Sonata's got a lot longer to go. Uh, we often talk about the one-legged man in the ass-kicking contest. You know, sometimes you just have to kick as much ass as you can on the one leg you have. Oh, now one of that TK. Death's door, so to speak, out of out of reach of you to use those long limbs, use that reach of Jake Lee. You're going to see it here with these strikes. Look at this. Oh! Even I saying it doesn't hurt, it does. That is not true. Same man who said he walked in at 100%. Yeah. And Shota Umino is going to show you some of his cards, but he's not going to show you all of them. He's going to tell you what he plans on doing. He's not going to show you the pain that it causes him to do it. 
No, until you know, at some point you just don't have a choice. And as much as he was telling Jake Lee, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't hurt, he was telling himself. Yeah, you're right it doesn't to hurt. think about calling this right here. Shota's not moved whatsoever, Chris. He just caved in his chest with that kick, Walker. Well, Shota's starting to stir here, but I don't know. I might have called that a little bit early. Referee Marty Asami, though, going to have the higher jurisdiction. Yeah, Umino knows oh. full well about matches that have been stopped early in decisions against him. I think it helps that Shota Umino is not refereed by Daddy Red Shoes tonight. Uh, oh, Umino catching out that knee. And that giant killing could have shot down Umino. And Umino takes down the giant. And Jake Lee, Jake Lee's faded. Look at the fire behind the eyes of Shota Umino. And Umino was down, Jake Lee was performing his own standing 10 count in the corner, and now Lee is fully faded. Oh, this contest, Walker. By my maths, he would be through to the playoffs. Yeah, confirmed Guaranteed. playoff shot. He would be at 12 points. <laughs> and with a win already <laughs> over both Tetsuya and Evil. You want to play with me? You do your masters then. Come on then. Huh? Come on then, sit down, bitch. Well, my hands are in me. Look at my finger. Oh, and we're sitting cross-legged. Hey, where's Kelsey Oria? Kelsey Oria, yeah. watch yeah. this. And again, that split focus. One of Shibata's students in Gay Kid, one of his greatest rivals in Zack Sabre Jr. You're exactly right. Oh, and now this is not Shibata's style whatsoever. Well, that's urinating on history is what it is. That's, that's Gay Kid's style. That is, bring up all of that history. Bring it up, put it on the forefront. The legacy of Shibata, the legacy of Billy Robinson and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Bring it up so you can desecrate it. Gabe Kidd believes he's beyond it all. Zack Sabre Jr. pays tribute, pays respect to the people that came before to become one of them in the future. And Gabe Kidd, that uppercut shot, German suplex, and Sabre Jr. still up. Dragging in German town. Gabe Kidd cannot die, not by a long shot. Sabre Jr. with the punt kick, sending Gabriel Kidd back to 2017, back to Newcastle upon time. Well. It's back to the future, Walker. It's who Wan make their stride into the playoffs and on into G1 Climax glory. Gay kid, not one to talk about nationality and national pride. How's your chest? But I think both two and three singles record, Evil with two, Shingo Takagi with the three victories. Shingo, the most recent in New Japan Cup. Yeah. And support Genesis, rather, and oh. twist it out. Now, over that never open weight championship that yep. Evil had uh, desecrated. Uh, spray painted black. Disrespectful in the mind of Shingo Takagi, one of the best never open weight champions this company's seen. Well, I mean, you talk about how Evil has desecrated the very sanctity of New Japan Pro Wrestling. You think about the, the contrast following that great match we had with Zack Sabre Jr. and Gabe Kidd to. What Evil's trying to do with Shingo Takagi, but he hasn't shut him down yet, Walker. Nope, not at Little all. Rope -a -dope. This is the sanctity of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Sanctioned within the heart of the Rampage Dragon. Yeah, well, <laughs> that, that was an open palm, Walker. Those weren't yeah. one of the close fists. Hey, I'll take it. Did you see Shingo Takagi? Wow. Here's the rule at home, folks. Do you see Shingo Takagi punch Evil in the face? No, you didn't. Shingo follows in from behind evil misdirection in the corner and a lariat takes down Takagi. 
And keep in mind here, Chris, it is evil that blames Shingo Takagi for his lack of a victory in New Japan Cup 2024. The two men didn't meet, but rather Shingo Takagi interfering in his match against Yota Suji when House of Torture tried to run him up, allowing Suji into the finals. Exactly right. Fisherman's in, cover here, suplex down, and it's two only. As many plans as Evil continues to try and build, Shingo Takagi is forced to foil. And any plan that Evil or the house have for New Japan Pro Wrestling's future is the antithesis of everything.